ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما we begin by thinking and praising allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he is the most deserving the only one deserving of all of our praise and thanks and we beseech him to send his peace and blessings upon the last and final messenger sent as a mercy to all mankind Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and upon his family and his companions and all of those who follow his tradition his sunnah until the end of time it is important that we remind ourselves and one another that we remind ourselves and one another that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of what we do and aware of what we say at all times and in all places we are the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is as sami' al basir the most hearing the all hearing the all seeing nothing escapes his vision or his awareness and it is important and vital for our success that we are aware of his awareness of us and that is what we mean by taqwa we renew our taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we make sure that the angel of death does not find us except that we are in a state of submitting to his will that we are in a position of either obeying his commandments or protecting ourselves from his anger by falling into something that he prohibited in mecca in the year of the conquest of mecca the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in the holy mosque and the famous companion the best of all of the companions the best person after the prophets and the anbiya the khalifa after the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away was abu bakr as-siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he brought to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam someone very special he brought abu quhafa and if we know the name of Abu Bakr, then we know that this man is his father. Abu Bakr brought his father to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And what's interesting is his father at this time was very old in age. His hair was completely white. He probably had a curvature in his posture from his old age. And Abu Bakr brought him in this condition to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to meet the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to greet him, to spend time with him. And upon doing this, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Abu Bakr, لَوْ أَقْرَرْتَ الشَّيْخَ فِي بَيْتِهِ لَأَتَيْتُهُ Abu Bakr, why didn't you just leave this shaykh in his home, in the comfort of his house, so that I could have the honor of coming to him. Now of course, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the best of all creation, the most honorable, the most deserving of anybody to leave the comfort of their home to go and greet and salute and meet. And of course, Abu Bakr, having the strength of his iman, his love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was more than anyone else. And so of course, he was going to take his father to meet Abu Bakr. But, having said that, we learn a very important lesson from the response that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa gave to Abu Bakr in this scenario. 
which was to honor this man. Why? Because he referred to him as a shaykh. And linguistically, this word refers to someone that is elderly in age. Someone that, whose hair has become white. Someone who has had a long lifetime. And out of honoring these individuals, the Prophet ﷺ told us, gave us this lesson by way of this question to Abu Bakr, that we should be the ones to go to them. To show respect and humility and honor because of their old age and because of their status due to that fact. Rasulullah ﷺ also in another narration likened honoring the elderly to glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Rasulullah sallallahu inna min ijlalillah that from exalting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and glorifying from part of showing respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in fact ikram with shaybati al-muslim. To have ikram, to honor, to show respect, to serve the Muslim, the believer who is shayba, who their hair has become gray. They have reached an older age. So this is actually part and parcel of our duty towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Part of showing respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in fact being respectful and honoring the elderly amongst us. And there are many other narrations where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam highlights this important attribute. We have dedicated several discussions of Jumu'ah khutbah in the past and hopefully we will continue to do so in the future regarding manners, regarding adab, etiquettes, how to deal with people, how to behave with people. And we know that people are on different levels. People are on different levels. There are different ages, there are different backgrounds, they have different levels of education, different socioeconomic status, different positions with regards to leadership and whatnot. People are on different levels. And although we speak about equality in a praiseworthy sense, we have to understand that there is no one brush that you can paint everyone with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Qur'an that people are on different levels and people have been preferred. And Aisha, the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she says, we have been commanded, umirna an nunzila nasa manazilahum, to treat people according to their level and according to their status. Put people in their appropriate place. Different people are deserving of different types of behavior. And that is based on their status and based on their situation. And that applies to those that are different in age as well. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam affirmed when he said, لَيْسَ minna," That he is not from amongst us. Who? لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ لَمْ يَرْحَمْ صَغِيرَنَا وَيُوَقِّرْ كَبِيرَنَا He's not really from amongst us in terms of the community. Meaning, he is behaving in a manner which is not appropriate for our community. That person who is not merciful to the young and does not show proper respect and honor to the elderly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an, in more than one place, explain to us the journey of the lifetime. A journey of life that people go through. Wallahu الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ ضعف, Or another recitation, مِنْ ضعف. ثُمَّ جَعَلَ مِنْ بَعْدِ ضَعْفٍ قُوَّةٍ Allah created you in a state of weakness. And when you see that newborn baby, a couple of days ago, a beautiful couple visiting the area, they brought their newborn baby to the office, and it was a wonderful experience. So tiny, so small, delicate. الله الذي خلقكم من ضعف This baby, this infant. And it's not only in those first few days of birth, but for many weeks and months and years. This child is fully dependent on others to be fed, to be cleaned, to be taken care of. Everything completely dependent. That's the state of need. ثُمَّ جَعَلَ مِنْ بَعْدِ ضَعْفٍ قُوَّةٍ After this state of weakness, after the, after the state of need of others, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed the human being to develop until they have strength. 
quwwah they have the ability to stand up on their two feet and take care of some of their own affairs and then allah continues thumma ja'ala min ba'di quwwatin dha'fan wa shayba after that phase of strength and ability then it is part of sunnatullah fi khalqihi it's part of the design of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his creation that the next phase after that is that the human being returns to a state of sensitivity and when they are also having some weaknesses and some needs yakhluqu ma yasha allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates what he wills in a manner that he knows is best and is most fit subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite wisdom and so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam tells us that just how we are merciful to the young it's out of mercy just as you are merciful to the young also to be part and parcel of the muslim community necessitates that you also have tawqeer that you have respect and honor for those that are elderly as well the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man shaba shaybatan fil islam كانت له نورا يوم القيامة وكما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام that whoever spends this lifetime in Islam in believing and obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until their hair becomes gray and they are still holding to this deen and still obeying and working to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those gray hairs, those white hairs will be nur on the day of judgment for this person so many different narrations where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us the importance and the value of these people because everyone in our community has a different value it's up to us to recognize that and to honor people for the value that they have i remember being in a gathering once in a city called ahsa a beautiful city that's known for its farming and agriculture and what not and i was visiting a family over there they're a family of ulama of scholars maliki scholars and they have majalis they have gatherings and we were invited myself and a friend of mine we were invited to be guests in one of these gatherings that they had and so they told us come sit here it was a big room and there were couches and seats all across the room and people were continuing to come in maybe 40 50 60 people were coming in into this majlis into this gathering and there was something interesting about everybody had a particular seat where they were going to sit not necessarily assigned, but it was organized. Then afterwards, one of the hosts explained to us, they said, in our family, in our tribe, whenever we have any gathering, we always sit based on age. Those that are most elderly, and then those that are younger than them, and younger than them, until you reach the flanks of the room, until the edges of the room, that's where you will find the youngest people in the gathering. And the eldest, you will find them in the front, in the corner. A beautiful, small little uh, habit or tradition that they had as part of honoring these people, as part of honoring them for living this life of piety and of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So from the rights of the elderly, they have many rights upon us. And it's important that we spend some time to highlight that and spend a few minutes. From the rights number one, which applies to all people, a general right that they have upon all people, is respect. Respect and to be honored. And this not only applies to those that are Muslims, but even those that are non-Muslim. A non-Muslim elderly person deserves our utmost respect. Absolutely. And that is something established in the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So giving respect, honoring them, giving them a special place in society and in the community. Then there is a specific right. And that applies to those that have family relations with the elderly. The Prophet ﷺ said, and we know from verses in the Qur'an, الْأَقْرَبُونَ أَوَّلُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ That those that are closest to you in relation are most deserving of your kindness and your dutifulness and your goodness towards them. And so if somebody has relatives that are elderly then of course generally everyone in the community should show respect to them but specifically those that are related to them should give special attention and care to them remember how we began with the story of abu bakr and his elderly father that abu bakr was helping to walk to come meet rasulullah it comes in another narration also that rasulullah told abu bakr that take care of his hair 
put some hinna in his hair to basically groom him and take care of him. And he did not give this as a general recommendation to Abu Quhafa, the father himself. He told Abu Bakr, you do it. Because this man is very elderly. And he's instructing Abu Bakr, take care of your father in this man, groom him in this manner. Because he is in need of your support and attention in this regard. And so those that are related to, to the elderly, they have a special right that they have to fulfill towards them. To take care of them and make sure that their needs are taken care of. Also from the general adab and rules for the elderly, is that they be given preference. They be given preference. They are allowed to go first. And this could be something as simple as walking through the door, or it could be something more honorable, like for example in a gathering. There were three companions that took a journey. And upon reaching their destination, one of them had a particular situation with one of his relatives. He wanted to hasten back to Rasulullah and seek his counsel and his guidance. And it was a pressing matter. And so they rushed back to Rasulullah and this man came forward to the Messenger of Allah and he quickly began to explain his story to seek counsel. Rasulullah said, hold on, hold on. Kabir, kabir. He said, your uh, partners in the journey, they're older than you. Let them speak first. Let them go first. Kabir, kabir. The Prophet ﷺ saw in one of his dreams that he was given a siwak and he gave it to the one that was younger before the one that was older and it came in his dream and the Anbiya, they received wahi in their dreams. Kabir, kabir. Give to the older one first. And so oftentimes we like to honor the person that is on the right hand side, for example, and that is also from the adab. That is something kind and praiseworthy. But even in this case, if there is an elderly person, allow them to go first. When we have food, for example, it was very uh, bothersome or disappointing, for example, in Ramadan when you have the people are lining up to pick up food, iftar or suhoor or something, and all these young people are getting in the line before the elderly. That's not appropriate. Part of honoring and part of showing respect is you allow them to go first before you. Because they've been around longer than you. And they've done more than you. Imagine somebody who's been a Muslim for 60, 70, 80 years. How many Ramadans did they fast versus you? How many different salawat have they prayed? How many more experiences of charity have they had? So honoring those that are older than us. And we did say that this also applies to non-Muslims as well. Even when you are in a situation where you're interacting with someone that is a non-Muslim and they are elderly, give them preference and allow them to go first. And without saying any words or saying what your identity or your religion is, you have already been an excellent ambassador and representative of your faith by a simple, kind gesture like that. Also, one of the most important things that we can give to the elderly is time and attention. Time and attention. I was watching a documentary not too long ago where they were interviewing people in uh, elderly care homes. And they were asking them, what is one of your main concerns? They said, one of our biggest concerns is having people to interact with, to socialize with, to speak to. It's very unfortunate that some elderly people become neglected. And that's unacceptable. They should still be spoken to and addressed and given time and attention. Now, sometimes the elderly, they want to be taken care of or they need to be taken care of. And other times, they actually want to have some independence. So oftentimes as younger people, we lose patience. And we want to kind of behave in a patronizing manner. And especially for those that are younger, sometimes we get caught up a little bit too much in our energy. But we should remind ourselves to be more respectful and to slow down, to calm down, and to be supportive. Whether that means to take care of this elderly person and fulfill their needs for them, or whether it means to support them and help them do what they are trying to accomplish on their own. Be supportive. That's one of the greatest and most respectful ways that we can honor an elderly person by giving them our time, our attention, and our support. Now what about the elderly people themselves? Right now I would like to, I have been addressing 
those that are of the younger age, how we should deal with those that are elderly. What should the elderly people themselves do? Well, Rasulullah gave us a beautiful hadith when he said, he was asked, who are some of the best people? And he said that Ahsanuna, some of the best people, man tala umuruhu wa hasuna amaluhu. That some of the best people are those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed and granted a long life and they have used that time and that life to continue to do righteous and good deeds. And so just like when a person is young, just like when they are old, they should always hasten based on their abilities to do good deeds and to do actions which are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us, Al-barakatu fi akabirikum. We have no idea how much blessings we have in our community, in our ummah. Maybe perhaps just from the small and simple dua of some of the elderly that we have in our community. They are a source of barakah for our community. Our teachers always taught us that yes, the young have energy and they want to take active roles and lead. And that is something good and that should be supported. But it should be supported within the parameters of the wisdoms of the elderly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who are most respectful and honor the elderly, which is a part of honoring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بما فيه من الآيات والذكر الحكيم أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم Repent to Allah for He is the most forgiving, most merciful and please come forward and fill up all of the gaps that you see in front of you الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا. Please come forward. There is a lot of space on my left here. There is always space in the corner and there is space in the NPR. Please fill the gaps that you see in front of you and make space for your brothers that are still coming. And on that note, I would like to make a um, important announcement with regards to those that enter um, a few minutes before Dhuhr Adhan. As you can see on the clock on the wall, the time for Dhuhr Adhan is about 12.59 or so. And Rasulullah wasallam taught us that there are three times in the day when it is prohibited to make salat, to make prayer, the ritual prayer. And of those times is when the sun is in the middle of the sky. Now considering the fact that due to certain scholarly opinions and understandings which are established and which have been adopted by this center, the first shift of the Jumu'ah does begin before the time of Dhuhr comes in. But if you happen to be coming in late and you come in within about five minutes prior to the time of Adhan, do not pray to rak'az. Come in and sit down and listen to the khutbah. Because that time, about five minutes, give or take, before the time of Adhan, the sun will be in the middle of the sky and Rasulullah ﷺ forbade us from making salat at that time. So if you come in at that time, and we should always make an effort to come early for Jumu'ah, before the khutbah begins, so that the angels will write your name on the scrolls. Once the khutbah begins, once the imam stands up and says salam, the angels fold the scrolls and the opportunity to have your name written on those special scrolls of those who hasten to Jumu'ah, that opportunity has been lost. So make sure you put an effort to come early before the khutbah begins. But if you have some circumstances that delayed you for whatever reason, and this is not something that you're making a habit, of course, and you walk in five minutes before the time of Dhuhr Adhan, do not pray to rak'az. Sit down and listen to the khutbah, because that is a time when it is prohibited to make salat. Likewise, if you come in and the adhan is taking place, do not wait for the adhan to finish before praying your two rak'az. If you wish to pray your two rak'az, pray them right away and sit down and listen to the khutbah. Because listening to the khutbah is more virtuous and more important than listening to the adhan. So these are some important points to keep in mind when we are coming to Jumu'ah. Internalize it, understand it, ask questions if you do not understand, and share this message with others who may not have uh, heard. We have been speaking about honoring and respecting the elderly and what our rights are towards them. And because they are a very important part of our community, Alhamdulillah, 
this masjid has taken the initiative to establish a special committee which would give a space and an opportunity and a place for the elderly to come together to have certain activities, to socialize with one another, to share ideas, uh, to have certain um, uh, perhaps uh, uh, discussions of current events or things that they are dealing with, to consult with one another. And they are calling this the Pioneer Club. It has started just a few weeks ago. It is a beautiful, commendable effort uh, from this uh, masjid, alhamdulillah. And everyone is encouraged to support such an effort. Either by attending, if you are within that uh, target age range of 50 and above, or if you have any relatives or acquaintances or neighbors perhaps that would benefit from such a program, tell them about it, spread the word, and encourage others to attend and to participate. And there is a table outside on your way out of the masjid, you will notice a table there for the Pioneer Club where you can sign up, where you can ask questions, where you can get more information, where you can connect uh, with those that are organizing this effort and uh, get in contact with them. We will have our usual Friday Family Night program tonight. Inshallah, I will be delivering that lecture and it will be on the topic of Ayatul Kursi, on the title of The Ever Living, um, which is a tafsir of Ayatul Kursi. We also have a Hajj seminar for those that are either going for Hajj or are interested in knowing and learning about how to do so. And that will be in conjunction with IOK, myself and Sheikh Farhan Zubayri. And that will take place at the IOK campus tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, uh, at 2 p.m. And having mentioned about Hajj, I did speak to you all last week about the Hajj program that we have from this masjid. And there are literally a handful of seats left. And the time is very short. I mentioned to you uh, last Jumu'ah that there was only one more week. So we are literally in the last few days before the package will be closed and visas will begin to be issued. I myself already had to give them my passport. The, the process of issuing the tickets and the visas and whatnot has already begun. So this is a last opportunity for anyone here who is interested and willing to make hajj or who knows someone that would be that you please mention this to them and you encourage them. You will be supporting them in fulfilling their pillar of Islam and you will be supporting the masjid and the group going from this masjid. So please share that news. And finally, the registration for the Saturday school um, is tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. This is the Saturday school for Arabic and Quran for the children. And that will be uh, from the ages, from the grades of preschool to sixth grade. So registration is tomorrow beginning at 10 a.m. If anybody is interested, please come here at that time for registration. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who listen and follow the best of what they hear. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi akhirati hasana wa qina adab al we ask Allah to give us the best of this life and the best of the hereafter and to protect us from the punishment of the hellfire. Ibadallah, inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon udhkuru Allah al-azim al-jaleel ya'dhkurkum Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He will remember you. Washkuruhu ala ni'amihi wa ala'ihi yazidkum Be grateful and thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He will increase you in bounties and gifts. Wala dhikru Allah akbar The remembrance of Allah is the greatest and better than everything else wallahu ya'lamu ma tasna'un allah is fully aware of what we do wa aqim as-salah Mm-hmm.